what is up guys, Wacko Joke here, and today we'll be playing Selene, Apothesis. Now don't worry about me, I won't be here for long. I'm only here to, you know, say hello to you, and say goodbye. I'll see you guys soon though, alright? I'll give it away to the other Wacko. I know, I know, you're gonna miss my chivalrous jawline. Dang it, I missed the toots line. <laughs> yeah, get the frick out of here. So, we're back at Selene Apothesis. We're gonna load back to where we once was. 422, 432. Oh, yeah, with the seductive voice she had. Yeah, I remember. Mother frick, you know, if I pay just. If I had $7, I can get an English voice actor. So let, hold on, let me go look at my bank account. <laughs> Cause I wanna hear this voice in English. All right gang, it's been a few days, but we here. We finally here and we are... Sound, no, DLC, which English. Did I? Did I just do something stupid? <clears throat> Hold on. I swear to God, I could have had her voice in English this whole time. I bought the DLC pack for nothing. You were lying around idly, and you're not even a cat. See? This is the one I bought. All ages only. You were lying around idly. What the frick does that? Mother fricker, I messed up on that? I, okay, whatever, whatever, it's okay. Okay, whatever, whatever, I can get used to this. I messed up, we all make mistakes. I got art book out of it, so I guess that's kind of clean. And it was on discount with like two other games. So, you know, I shouldn't be mad about something like that. Yep, if only I looked in the sound first to see if I could get it. Okay, whatever. When he returned with the bucket, the cat was gone. I guess thumbnails are gonna be easier, even though I don't have Chad go here, so it's gonna be easier anyway. Hello? Whoa! The Theater of presents how to bake, um, blank. In the kitchen, something exciting is happening. What the frick is going on? Take? You know. Hey, what was that? You will need a blade. Okay. Did you take the pills? Scratch out the entrails. The Egyptians widely used honey for embalming and preserving food. Later, their recipes were adopted by the Greeks. At the teaspoon of apricot jam, a walnut, and a little cinnamon. For bacon, put a teaspoon of butter on top of, you know, whatever. It's in the microwave. Microwave to five or seven minutes at full power. Don't listen to them scream. Hey, this ain't for me. Like, honestly, I, I forgot this was an Eldritch Horror game. I forgot all this for just to be scared. Bon appetit. Should I not bathe her? The, the next time he saw her was in a few days or maybe a week. I'm not really sure. I'm going to do that. Y'all can't really see it like that. He always had a bad sense of time, especially when he was immersed in work. His work. He still couldn't sleep, but at least he was making some progress with the script. It was a narrative game project, as the customer called it. But actually, it meant do whatever you have to do to finish it on time. Forget about the payment if you don't. Uh... 
And so he did, although he was resentful, and that got in the way a lot, to be honest. The reason of those feelings was... Yeah, I know, I got a click. Uh, he knew how stupid it was, but he couldn't help it. He forgave her for the bite immediately, but that wasn't the thing. He was bitter about how the cat ran away, despite him trying his best to take care of her. It was it bugging over here for y'all. See that visual glitch? Get wacko. Magnify. He, she was nowhere to be found in the house. She can stop now. So he immediately thought about an open window on the second floor. Maybe he should have closed it. He dwelled on the thought for a while. He even approached the window at some point. When Yin, he decided not to do anything about it. He was hoping. And there was no shame in that. Like, come on now. It's not the same as you turn up 10 and start eyeing girls. The cat would come back. What the frick? And she did. I definitely messed up on reading that, and that's on me. He had just settled himself on a sofa with a book. Uh, some was the word, as he couldn't remember a thing from the cover. Even though he read the title several times, I don't think he should be reading that book then. The symbols were floating before his eyes. Of course, he couldn't make out a word. No wonder, no wonder, considering he didn't sleep at all. When you think about it, it was surprising he could write in this state. But whatever, either way, he was barely following the book. So he wasn't upset at all. What? Upset at all when he... What? Upset at all when a fluffy head butted his hand. It's crazy I'm not using that new voice. Like, the new voice pack that I bought. on Because there was actually... It's just the all ages part. Like, what the frick do you mean, all ages? I'm sorry. Like, look at this. All ages only. What if I want to get hear some raunchy lot? Let me shut up. I'm just mad that I Lee had one already there and I did not need to do it. But hey, whatever. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. If it's not fun, then we just fighting. Okay. Hey, I'm trying to read here. And you don't seem to be getting anywhere. Okay, I do like this voice though. I ain't gonna lie, you need to chill with that. I'm glad it's just as soft and just sickly sweet as the one, the J um, Japanese one, right? I don't need to check. We already know. Hold on. <clears throat> there we go. I had to hear the voice louder. Better scratch me right here. Nah, I need that louder. Hold on. Uh. <clears throat> Need that louder. All right, there we go. Let's see. Let's see. So you're a cat patter, huh? It's not like I had a choice. He complied. Oh my god, you were absent for so long. Now it's too quiet. But y'all, y'all here for the sound? Y'all here for me? I thought you won't be back. It kind of hurt. I ain't gonna lie. I may have got mad and threw a little fit, but you weren't here to see all that. She <laughs> There's a big difference between expectations and hopes. Let me turn this up to 50 for y'all. You know, just just so y'all can hear it more too. He had learned that well. We can close the window right now. This is, I guess, you know, kind of like the free nature of it, I guess. Why did you leave me though? Did I do something wrong? Was it the baiting you part? And me blacking out while baiting you? Then microwaving a head or something weird like that? The cat stayed silent. It was. I'm happy you back. Like, come on now. Why the frick would I be bitter over a stray cat doing stray cat things? And whatever. It doesn't matter that much. <laughs> I'm happy to have you back. After all, there was really no point in the grudge from the start. Like, seriously, what the frick is there to be mad at that a stray cat went out and strayed around? Nobody gains anything by holding on to small grudges and staying blind to what they really feel. He wouldn't have won anything. Not a dang lottery. 
It's not a dang lottery, whatever. The cat rubbed against his arm again. Okay, hold on. Let me focus with this. Dang it, no voice. He put the book down and gently placed her on his lap. Huh. So, like, we know the cat. So, all cats are humanoid things here? Is that, like, where we're getting at? Or is this, like, an eldritch cat? Because it did say eldritch horror in the tags or some warning. The locket around her neck, unexpectedly cold, touched his skin. Then he got a hunch. You went back to your owner. You cheated on me. Oh, God. Did you go home? I have no home. <laughs> Dang. Oh, someone must be caring about you if they put that collar on. Like, come on now. I'm not, I'm not stupid. Sometimes a collar is just a collar. Yeah, I don't see a name on it or a number. She must be telling the truth. Don't you know? This time it was him who stayed silent. The cat buried her head in his stomach. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> you want me to take it off? No. My apologies. Like, honestly, I'm going too far. Probably gotta get a replacement collar first. It is mine now. <laughs> Besides, it's easier this way if I catch someone's eye on the streets. Mm -hmm. he, hold on, we, he nodded. Because if you think about it, that really was a reasonable choice. Hold on, am I getting brainwashed by this thing? Maybe I should have had some anger then. The cat's fur was thick and smooth. Very pleasant to the short touch. He wanted to bury his face in it and find out what it smelled like. What she smells like. Yo, what's your name? Like, come on now, what's your name for real? Of course. Huh? Everything has a name. Mm-hmm. Why are you speaking in riddles? And what's yours? Oh, frick! We finally seen her eyes! What the frick? This is the first time we've seen them. I got, I'm getting too entranced by a voice that I'm not even noticing the eyes. The cat looked at him carefully with her bright yellow eyes, as if saying, take a guess. I would say Mia, but I know too many Mias now, so it would be weird if I named you Mia. But you do look like a Mia, but I, I literally can't. I know like three now. Two indirectly. So it's like even more weird. What sucks? So now I don't know what to name you. But she didn't actually say anything. On her locket, there was a small engraving. A crescent moon. I, it's, it's shadows blocking it for me. That was dimly shining in the pale light coming out of the window. Celine. Oh, frick. Or Selen, if... Or selling, eh? I don't know. The cat looked up at him, and her pupils flickered into two full moons in an eclipse. She rubbed against his arm one last time and stood up, stretching, arching her back. I did not need to say arching that loudly. Frick, y'all heard that. Don't close the window on the second floor. Okay, whatever, I won't. She left. But the name stayed with him, in and around the house. I could turn that up some more, to be honest. Let's let's turn this up to 70. I want to hear that voice louder. Celine. Oh, it's lightning striking, or what's my eyes fizzing for? So hum the glass, white and moonlight. How many endings are there to this game? Let's turn this up to 80 so when we hear it talk louder. And the music can be louder too. So whispered the long shadows of the branches outside the window. I mean, it really doesn't matter. We do not need to focus on the name. Celine. Frank, did I just make the wrong choice? He wasn't sleeping, but his house was. Wow, do y'all hear the freaking way I'm talking right now? And its lullaby was woven with one single word. Please, nothing weird, bro. Do not be getting brainwashed. Should I focus on the name? What the heck? Is that the right choice? I was really just saying it don't really matter what the name means. But I guess maybe it did, and now I'm messing up. What do y'all think? We're about to find out. He had a suspicion concerning rats of a while already. At times, something scratched inside the walls, 
and he became sensitive to such things. You know, when he could not sleep for a long time. Faced with these symptoms for the last time, he took a flashlight and a stick, then circled the house for a long time, tapping the walls here and there. He had no idea how to deal with rats. We can tell. No, no, we can, we can really tell. At, at least that's what he thought, until he remembered how his mother used to handle this. We gonna gas the house? Just about to get some big old po- Oh, after Timo had vanished, poison became the weapon of choice when it came to dealing with rats. The kind of rat- No, the kind that should be kept away from small children and pets. Oh, frick, we actually gas in the house? Let's go, chemical warfare against rats. Let's see, having remembered this, he went out to the hardware store and filled the cart with colorful pages. Packages, what the frick? Then he thoroughly stewed a whole house with bright, deadly pellets that crunched under his feet when he went to get coffee. Hey, should we really be putting out poison when Celine could eat one and possibly die? I mean, she's probably smart enough not to, but you never know, you know? What does this do? Whoa, wrong button. Uh, I guess nothing. After a while, time stopped. I mean, the sound stopped. What the frick? Yet, he could hear him again now. Something was scratching. Oh, God, it's inside of my skin! It's been a long time, so no wonder. Does pest always come back? That's what his mother would say. And this time, he'd agree with her completely on the matter. He considered his options. He had no poison left, and he could not go out to restock. Why not? He was completely immersed in his work. Oh. And although he was now much closer to the end of his script than to his beginning, there was still much to be done. Although he couldn't sleep, he could still work, and it would be stupid to lose pace just to go shopping. Really? Besides, he now had a cat. He really didn't own her, you know? But she came to see him, and he always made sure he ate. she ate well. He had some bullcrap that I accidentally clicked away from. Nice. So, poison was not an option. Of course, he considered asking the cat to do the job. But every time she came, the thought completely vanished from his mind. Yeah, okay, bro. You need to chill. That other things than rats to talk about. He told her a lot about his work and sometimes read what he wrote. The cat rarely gave any comments, but never refused to listen. He liked that about her. Not only that, of course, like... You know, take her scent, for example. She smelt of warm fur, dust, and something sweet. What? This may sound simple, but the smell made his heart ache with sadness and unbearable love. I, I, I guess that's valid, I guess. It was the smell of a warm June night in which Timo had vanished. Okay, did she eat Timo? And so, also many beloved cats before and after him this cat however was special he could feel it although he couldn't articulate couldn't find the right words what a writer you are if you can't find the words that's what he would say if he was talking to himself but he never did such things even if he couldn't talk for such a long time what the frick am I adding words for at least you can work, said the computer screen, flickering in the dark. This is the end. Um. What the fudge? Um. Sorry, that threw me off guard, but this is an interesting type of visual novel. It's more like a novel that you can see. It's like visual novel, but literally, instead of... The other visual novels I'd be playing. I guess you could say Slay the Princess was also like it. But it was also like, Slay the Princess was its own unique thing in a way too. It's like, I'm not sure how to explain it. Like, visual novels I played, none of them is like this except for It Gets So Lonely Down Here. I think that's the name of it. That's the only way I can compare it with this one. I'm not sure. It's interesting. I'm kind of vibing with it. Even though it's kind of like, it's more of a... I'm gonna listen to this while I relax tonight type of visual novel. Did I say he heard that thing again? Probably. Something scratched. And this time, the sound was different. Do not look behind you. Just run, and then we look. He swung around and looked behind him. Okay. 
and swallowed hard, staring into the darkness. So we just, so we just don't listen to survival instincts. I ain't gonna probably look behind me too. I will instantly go towards that door. I'm sorry, I hear a weird noise. Whoop out the room, instantly. Dang. What if there was like a cool magical portal? Well, let's hope next time. What? Um, what the frick? Suddenly his hair cleared up. Something is coming, said the computer screen. Careful, said the flat white ceiling lamp. It should be downstairs, said the crumpled bed. Downstairs? The first floor was dark, veiled in slumber, just like the rest of the house. There's no point in turning on the light if you're going to stay in the same room, typing all night, and all morning, and all day, and all the next night too, unless of course the cat comes. And even if he had to go out, he knew the house perfectly well. Even bonded with it, you know? They're li My bed and ceiling fan, ceiling light, are telling me that there's something here. We, we close like that. He needed no light to get anywhere he wanted. That's why he won't turn the lights on, so the one who scratches wouldn't know that he knows. He sighed it, so, as he went down the stairs silently. <laughs> Downstairs was quiet. He listened to the silence for a few minutes, but it sounded unconvincing. If something had started scratching, it wouldn't go away that easily. Like, really. What the frick? He knew that for sure. Those pests always come back. He had to arm himself somehow. Where's my bat? With the bat, for example, exactly. He still hadn't put the bat away. So he was lying somewhere in the dark living room, heavy and reliable. All he had to do was reach it before the one who scratches gets back to his work. As he passed the kitchen, a prickly shiver ran through him as the someone was looking at him from the darkness of the room. Or was the room itself watching him? Either way, he knew better than to turn around and peer into the dark maw of the entrance. If he does, if he dares, something will come out. Something he doesn't want to know about. He found the bat under the dresser, and just in time. Cause the next moment, he wouldn't have been able to move. Frig, I'm scared. Okay. Okay, it looks like there was no monster. It's just, it's just blood. Whew! Something was scratching in the walls. A new, disgusting sound that had nothing to do with rats. To be more precise, this new sound didn't have, well, could not have anything to do with a living being. Whatever the frick that noise was, a painful spasm passed through his body. He crouched as if someone had hit him in the gut. And then he did something stupid. Hey, stop that! For real. Please? I can't take it anymore! Oh. Hey, was we looking at a living thing right there or was that? Um, but nightmares don't end just because you ask politely or because you really can't take it anymore. It felt like the voice didn't belong to him. Of course the voice was his own, but he certainly would never have done something like that. You never talk to the one who scratches. Squeak? Screak. I don't know how to say that. Screak. Such a disturbing reading word. Mmm. Alright, that kind of got me a little bit. Yeah, let me move my mouse to this side. Yeah, never again. He probably buried if there were any visible traces left. But there were none. Only in the screech here and there. As if something was just trying his strength on the house. Looking around for something. Looking for him. He regretted speaking out loud many, many times. It would have been better if he died quietly right here. 
This will solve so many problems. What? Did we just get a bad in the first? What? The fudge? Wait, let me... What? 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 He was leaning against the back of the sofa, quietly whimpering when it went silent, as suddenly as it begun. For a while, he continued, sitting crooked like a giant fetus, hugging his knees and his back, and only moved when he really believed that everything had calmed down. Ouch. Freaking pins and needles for no reason, bruh. Like, why y'all doing this to me? This is... I ain't really get much to the romance part. Should I really about the 18 plus pack? At least then I would have seen some romance. I ain't really trying to see all that. Because, like, we still don't know. Like, do cats look like this? Like, what? what's really going on here? Because I still have no clue what's really going on here. But in that very moment, round the metal handle on the back door. What? The round metal handle on the back door began to shiver. Ah, that's, ah, cringe. He didn't immediately realize where the sound was coming from. The soft rattle of metal and glass. But he had a clue. I'm not saying, like, the writing screens. I'm saying the, no the noise is cringe, okay? The transparent glass on the back door was closed by a thin polka dotted curtain. And it trembled in rhythm with the sounds. Then the house got quiet again. Some force, the same one that beckons to the window on high floors, called him to look behind that polka dotted curtain. He knew that just one look would be enough for him to lose his mind, but the call was too hard to resist. No, it wasn't. What the freak are we talking about? Too hard to resist. No, 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 sir. Not for me. Not I. Hold on. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm ready for another jump scare. Y'all just hit me with like 70. Okay, it was only like two. And technically, I guess you could say one wasn't. It was just an appearance or something and a loud noise. That's a jump scare. Never mind. What the frick am I bugging about? Nah. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, I got this. Just tee up me. We have some fun. We'll tee up. Cat girl will cheer us up. Oh, y'all don't see my mouse anymore. Oh, never mind. I'm bugging. And he hadn't slept for so long. For too long. What the frick? Slowly, as if half asleep, he made his way to the door. He could see the pattern clearly now. So close it was. Small dots, each one quivering with a silent cry. Do not look. Do not look. For real, I'm telling you, don't look. What the frick are you doing? And he looked. He yanked the curtain aside and stared into the darkness with the eyes of a man facing a truck moving at full speed. So, like, everything you're doing here is on you, right? Oh, frick, I backed up. Of course there was no one at the door let me back up a little bit more you know just in case i'll let y'all handle this one for me y'all y'all tough oh my god i'm about to get attacked after that he decided to keep the bat nearby i'm staying back okay never mind we're good you never got over it did you what the frick are you talking about and what's is my character a bad person? And I'm atoning for something? Oh, what's up, Selene? What was I talking about? Not anymore. I was attacked and traumatized, but I forgot all about that. The cat was lying on his lap. It had been a long time since her last visit. Much longer than he would have liked. I don't know, to be honest. Something's happening to me, and it's not insomnia. It's as if I'm missing something, you know? As if something is missing inside of me. I can't explain it well enough, but maybe you know what I mean, hopefully. 
The cat was staring at nothing in silence. Something only cats can do right. It's like if a human did it, we called it dude a little stupid and absent minded. Cat does it. It's like, you know what? Good job, little fella. Do you believe? Um, uh, <clears throat> this sounds a little stupid, but do you believe in ghosts? Why would you ask? What the frick? What you mean, why would I ask? I, I think I've run into something I can't quite explain. The cat was silent for a while. Maybe. Oh? It is a matter of perspective. Okay. What do you mean? That which you've lost, those who you've lost. What's up with all these achievements? No, like seriously. <laughs> What's up with all these achievements? Because now I'm scared. Like, am I going down the wrong path on accident? The number gets bigger over time. Uh-huh. The struggle is not to become a ghost yourself. Oh, okay. I see you spitting. Before time, I mean. Ah. Uh. Something's hiding in his throat. I didn't want to upset you. No, no, no. It's all good. I really didn't. I, I, I said it's all good. Oh, God. Where are you getting so obsessed with this cat? You probably only met it like less than ten times. Okay. Sorry. Um, This guy's just it's a little bit cringe, but I, uh, I can't. I can't for Let me read this. I gotta do it. I gotta do it. Tia! I don't want to lose you. Please. Is it possible? The cat looked at him for a long moment, and her pupils, unusually large, looked as black as a moonless night. Scratch my ear, all right? Uh. Okay. Hold on. Let me do something. Okay, there we go. I'll sing you the best song. Oh, frick, I'm getting the song? Hold on. Honestly, I'm down with this. I like all of your songs. Probably. I know. Dang. It's that. Okay, you know, I'm starting to like this cat. I understand what my dude's seeing in her. But I'll sing the best one. Frick, I forgot to whip out Chad Cole Joker. Whatever. He ran his head. He ran his hand through the warm, thick fur that smelled of dust and something sweet. The cat was smiling at him, lying in his arms. It's continuously zoned. Oh, there we go. Stop. He could feel, with all his beings, the, vi the vibrations of another. Very different world. No, the vibrations of another. Very different world as they were lulling in his body. Huh. Please no jump scare. Uh. Whoa. Never heard that save sound. The next time, he heard the one who scratches right beneath his window. But need the open window on the second floor to be precise. At that moment, he was struggling with a tough scene near the story's ending. Managing things is quite common if you haven't slept for a while. And get a... So I just can't read. Let's try that again. Imagining things is quite common if you haven't slept a while and did a good job on burning out. You think you're hearing things like as if someone is quietly slurping in the far corner of your room, just beyond where your eye could see. Like, what? <laughs> that wouldn't even make sense. It's so specific, but like... Since it's so specific, I'm totally not looking around as I ever say this. Um, like, come on now, it's, it wouldn't, nah, nah. Or for instance, like, as if it's scratching the wall and brick crumbs are getting stuck under his nails. Like, what? What? And, and it's climbing higher and higher, you know? Um, what? He realized it could all be in his head. So, of course, he just took his hands off the keyboard and listened carefully. Because, you know, it's all it's not actually happening. You know, j just, just in case. It could be that nothing was actually scratching. Okay, here we go. Another one of these attacks. But his body already knew what was going on. 
it became cold and stiff, exactly like a house wall. Yep. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Boy, do you do hear it. Why, of course you hear it. Why would it be any different? After all, the one who scratches finally smelled you, and now I won't back off. Yep. Yep. And that's when this nervous tick came in. Screak. Is that like my nails touch or something? Thud. Screak. Thud. What a duo they were. He had to hold his breath to keep back the mixture of hysterical giggles and sobs, trying to burst out his chest. If they had escaped, this he knew, that would have been the end of him. Otherwise, he still had a chance. Pretty solid one, to be honest. Like, all they gotta do is not laugh or cry. If he managed to suppress the tick, that is. But the text doesn't work out. Just, you know, look away from the screen and... Wait a little. The tick will subside by itself. But what about the case when the one who scratches is creeping up on the wall, higher and higher, and you can hear its nails, and... <laughs> oh, it's got so many of them, leaving tiny, tiny grooves in the house's cladding? What? They are very sharp, those nails. Mm, I ain't see nothing. What the frick was that? Ah, sorry, my... My imagination's acting up again. Screak, squeak, and squeak. Yeah, how far are we in? Dang, we not an hour in. I can't just end it here, you know, and take a break. Okay. His mother had always had fitting prayers, ready for every occasion. But this time, this wasn't the right moment to think of it. As he had to try and suppress something. This time, even his mother would be taken by surprise. She probably had to consult a neuropathology forum. As this case sure needs a professional's opinion. I need something to drink. That's what I need. What the frick? Something like greetings. My boy hasn't been sleeping for a month or so, and you know, it's already started to get out of hand. He sits in a dark room all day, writing his stupid scribbles. And I don't even know why he got it into his head that he can write, because after all these years in business, he still has neither a name nor connections. You know what I mean? And besides, she was always fond of embarrassing him before getting to the point. I mean, besides, he gets an awful nervous tick when the one who scratches crawls up to his window to scratch a hole in his stomach. Like, you know, it's so, it's so weird. What prayer would you find appropriate for this occasion? He's not really going to hit this thing with a bat, is he? My baby boy won't hurt a fly. He has no balls for that. Like, come on now. Mom, why you say that? First thing he did when days had worn off was grabbing the bat. Then he pressed himself against the wall by the window. And that was all he could do. For the nails were already scratching very close to the sill. Yo. Like, what if it's Celine, though? Like, are we really gonna hit the cat that we need to stay sane? We gotta wait till it, like, gets in. Like, we can hit it with a stink attack then. Nope. Squeak and squeak and squeak. I'm coming for you, little whiny boy with no balls. Okay, now you're doing too much. I'm gonna scratch a hole in your belly, see if I can find them. What the? Well, they're, da they're lower than that, but... Hey. He didn't want to see what was under the sill. He would rather die than look at it. Squeak! The nail stuck the sill. What? The nail struck the sill. He knew there are now black marks on it and some metal shavings got under their nails maybe some of those nails got broken but the one who scratches does not care like seriously it's kind of a crazy person oh it's got so many of them yep I messed up on that he stared straight ahead his teeth were clenched and saliva bubbled at the corners of his parted mouth he was weeping without a sound, choking on a silent scream. He really wasn't... He wasn't really gonna hit this thing with a bat, was he? Um... Do I... Do I save just in case you do, bro? Yeah, I hit that! No, that's not Celine. That's a monster. No, no. Nah. I, I actually thought it was like Celine, and we're gonna make a mistake. Nah. Hold the frick on mm. 
Why is my throat so dry? Hold on, give me a second. Totally not stalling. Okay. Something began to climb over the sill. He tried not to look, yet he could still see it. What the fudge is this? Something akin to squishy fingers or guts with lots of nails that grew on top of each other like clamshells. In the moonlight, he saw tufts of fur glistening on these finger guts, just like on a rat's tail. Then he realized two things. Firstly, he got an insight on Timo's gifts. The thing this old cat constantly brought. The thing is, his old cat constantly brought back something, you know? The prey, those morbid little signs of unconditional love, as he thought back then. But now he figured it out. The things he'd been secretly throwing out the you know, window in the middle of the night weren't dead mice. Those were small fragments, tiny pieces of the hideous fingers of the one who scratches. Look, Nightmaster, this nightmare is vulnerable. I drove it away. I brought you a piece of its flesh. What means you can sleep safely tonight? That's what the cat thought when his owner ruffled Timo's knobby, scrabbed head, scabbed head. We just gotta bite it then. Like, what's up? Um, uh, and secondly, he realized with all the clarity that this was the thing that lures cats into the darkness of summer nights, which they never return. The thing that took Timo away. And now it's come for Celine. He stopped weeping, but it was breathing, but was still breathing fast. Too fast, drawing air through Barrett's heat. Inside, he was boiling with rage. He wasn't really gonna hit this thing with a bat, was he? He was, like, come on now. You took, you took my people. I deserve retribution and blood. Yeah. He turned his head slowly and stared, eyes wide open without blinking as the glistening flesh clambered over the still. He was waiting. He felt sick, but, you know, decided he would throw up later. Right after he tunes that thing into a, what? Turns that thing into a bloody mess. Wapow! I know you. You won't get her. You won't get anyone! Ah! The sounds that came out of his throat really didn't resemble words, but that was exactly what he said. He charged at the thing and thrashed, thrashed and thrashed it. Please don't be Celine. He smashed its fingers, guts, tails, or whatever that crap was. And the bat seemed lighter than a feather. That's the adrenaline. Whoa! He had never been particularly strong. But now all his being became pure will, with the bat at the point of his application. Whoa! Bloody shreds kept bursting out and sprinkling around as he smashed and smashed and smashed. He paid no heed to the nails that were trying to get him, tearing his clothes, tearing his skin. He didn't care. He really didn't feel a thing. The frick was the tomato shown for? Anything but the desire to wipe this thing off the face of Earth. To smash our reality if you had to. What the frick was that? Finally, the corpse crumpled and distorted. The corpse crumpled and distorted, slid off the widow frame, window frame, collapsing down. It was over. The blood soaked back, slipped out of his hand, and rolled across the floor leaving a long, black-red smear. He wouldn't have been able to lift it. Yo, did they really start to bark while I'm in the mood right now? He was barely standing on his feet, and drool mixed with blood ran down his face. He didn't want to look down, because he could feel the wet heat spreading out around his stomach. He knew where that was going. He stumbled to the bed and fell on his back. Oh, no shower? No, okay. Hey. Worse than me, my boy. Worse than me. Like, what the frick you mean? You going straight to bed. Not even like a, a little shower? A hoarse, gurgling breath came out of his mouth. More than anything, he wanted that cat to come. 
Happy Dreamland! Everyone loves tomato soup. Um, what? T tomato soup is the devil's favorite food. It reminds me of home. What the fudge are you doing on this TV show, bruh? Elijah doesn't like tomato soup. Everybody loves tomato soup. You're eating it anyway, Elijah. What the fudge? Something changed. Huh? Oh my god, is that all the endings I can get? What the frick? Hold on. Alright, Mr. Jude, Anthony Bench, 27 years old, two convictions, second degree assault and battery, and armed robbery of a convenience store, was lying on the lawn in front of a house. 8 Sycamore Street, looking up at the pink sky, the pink dawning sky, with his eyes wide open. So we just killed a criminal then? Still terrible. One of his eyes was badly damaged by the fall, but Mr. Bench was not too worried about it. He died a few hours ago, so like, why would he be? Before that happened, he threw up with something whitish, and the vomit was still foaming on his cheek. Resembling cheap strawberry yogurt because of some blood mixed in it. The police was informed about it. The corpse, not the fact that Mr. Bench couldn't hold his dinner and got his pants a little dirty. But Miss Cora, a neat old lady who lived nearby and for the last decade never woke up later than five in the morning. But the first one to notice the body was the cat. She looked like a purebred British short hair in all respects, except for, you know, the color. Aside from the smoky gray head, it seems like she was de I'm not sure, is this the newest thing or like my character talking now? Now I'm confused. She was dropped into a vat of white paint. While her lower part was dipped into a white one. I mean, a black one, what? As she passed by Mr. Bench, she smelled the air from a few meters away, more cautious than interested. Under different circumstances, she might have actually been interested in him, but the cat already had a special someone. She soared upstairs, stabbing her milky white claws into the bark of a tall tree. The fur above the muscles on her back stood on end. In a few leaps, she reached that ledge and disappeared in the dark gape of the open window on the second floor. Is that an ending or what the fudge? I guess we, the person we killed was a person? A cat murderer? What? So what? Or did we just imagine the burglar as that? Or was that what we really seen? And it turned into like a human, what the frick happened? He could barely breathe at the time. But when the cat came back, he felt better. Much better. What have you done? Um... Uh, did not expect you to sound like this. Um, what's up? I was defending. I wanted to save you, you know? I kind of didn't clean up and I probably look very evil right now, but don't worry. I wanted to save us both. You fool. Dude was breaking in my window. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> but I just can't lose you. So, are you more offended by the fact that I... So you don't care that I killed the person, you're more offended that I killed someone in general? Like, what's, what's this? It is too late. Now nah, I'm scared. What you mean? He wanted to eject. Say something trivial, trivial, like, it's never too late, as long as they're both alive. What's my character's name? Because was I the dead one? That's what I thought at first, but there's no way, right? There's no way I tried breaking into the house. Of the dude who truly owned Celine and nah, that'd be crazy though. But he could not. The cat clung to him with her entire body, staking her lips to his. Whoa. 
he suddenly realized she wasn't in fact skinny, more of wiry and quite strong. What the frick? Uh huh? The next moment, he felt his flesh tearing apart, and it tore easily as quite some time had already passed, so I was the damn well, motherfucker. And with that, everything finally fell into place. Your cats always be eating the dead. Hey, don't look don't look at me with those eyes. He had read about it in some magazine. Feral cats and many house ones, if their owners pass away, aren't above eating human flesh if they manage to reach it. Just let it scroll up. What am I about to see? Like, am I really ready to see this? I can click away right now. Oh, wow. We Are you at least going to have tears in your eyes? Because, like, like you're just eating me, eating me. Oh, it's not even going to show your eyes? Really? That's how we playing? What are my friends sending me? I'm gonna say that's a sad face. Yeah. And that's my lip? You ate my lips first? Like, what the freak? You kissed me and then ate my lips? That red dot's pissing me off. Oh. But cats are very discerning, careful eaters. Huh, you can just turn it off. But cats are very discerning, careful eaters. I just had to get that out of my way. Having chosen the corpse, the cat remains faithful to it until it's stripped to the bone. Taking this into account, and also the number of empty sleeping pill cans everywhere. Good God, there are so many of them, too many of them. There was but a single conclusion to make. He died quite some time ago. Turns out the pills fell to him once again. The ceiling was swinging back and forth, swaying him like a caring mother swings a cradle. That's when he finally noticed the kitchen ceiling. He was not lying in bed, but on the floor. Did I slip and die? No. Some vague sounds were coming from outside the room, which grew more and more persistent over time. If he knew about Miss Cora's peculiar discovery, then he probably guessed that the police were already breaking down his door. The cat hurriedly stuffed her mouth, choking and swallowing pieces without even chewing them. He didn't mind. After all, a cat that has no home should eat well. Shouldn't she? Although he got rid of the one who scratches, the street, the street, I swear to God, the street is still full of dogs and evil people. Even his mother would agree, and his mother never agreed with him, like, what the frick? And yet he still had one question to ask. Say, like, you know, did... Like, I always felt special about you, right? But did you ever even love me? You know, even a tiny bit? Like, I understand we haven't talked as much as I wanted us to. And it's a terrible way to end it. But, like, did you? For a moment, the cat took a pause with her task and looked him in the eyes. Her body was shivering. A yellowish flap of flesh that occurred to be a piece of rotting fat was trembling in her long, sharp teeth. Don't say no. Don't say no. I will cry. This video will... Okay. Who I was about to end it right now instead of that one hour? Dang. He breathed in her scent for the last time. The smell of fur, dust, and something sweet. The smell of carrion. Beep.
depth of the author. Ending two out of six. I mean, hey, at least we died. Love, like, stop playing with me. Finish the gig. Dang. That really updated my journal. What the fudge? January 11th. The new school is okay. I wish I could make friends with someone, though. Mom is working late again. It's fine. I lifted a very heavy box when we moved in. Mom couldn't pick it up herself. You know, I'm kind of tough. I'm a big boy now. And big boys aren't afraid of anything, really. Like, come on now. I'm tough. I'm big. I'm strong. I'll just turn on the lights and watch TV with Timo and my friends. I'll eat the cool stuff with animals or robots or aliens, but not the creepy kind. Like, you know, still a little, a little scared. Let's end it here. Wow. I'm not sure how to feel. I mean, of course there's multiple endings, though. I'm glad that. That would have been a terrible ending. I mean, not really terrible. It would be bittersweet. We finished the job and everything, but yeah. I guess, let's end it here. So, thank you guys for watching me play Selene Apothesis. Of course, y'all gonna see multiple episodes of this until I get an ending that I truly love and want. Maybe there's a true ending, so maybe I'll get all six for that seventh true one, if that exists. The thumbnail is gonna be insane. I'm not sure what it's gonna be yet, but I know it's gonna be insane. So, if you wish to see more videos and episodes like this, make sure to like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next one, alright? Bye!